Hey, I'm Aaron Syme from WebRTC Ventures, back with you to share a few tips around WebRTC. Today we're going to talk about the difference between stun and turn servers very briefly. So these are two types of servers that you uh, hear about when you're building a WebRTC application yourself directly against a standard that help you to establish the connection. So let's talk about those. Uh, so when we talk about WebRTC, we're talking about a peer-to-peer uh, -peer connection between two browsers in its, in its simplest form. There are more complicated scenarios we would use WebRTC in, but for now, we're just gonna stay focused on that, that relatively simple scenario. Two browsers connected with a peer-to-peer -peer connection between them for exchange of the video, audio, and data. And to do that, uh, you have to have, to establish that connection, you have to have a signaling server that you've set up that does some handshaking that helps connect those two parties together before they can have the peer-to-peer -peer conversation. And this is where Stun and Turn come in. They're part of that signaling process. In a separate video, we'll talk more about signaling in general, but for today, I just want to talk about the difference between Stun and Turn as portions of that. And so Stun is what you're going to do most of the time. And what the Stun server does is basically for each browser, for each party uh, in that WebRTC connection, the Stun server will uh, help you know what is the IP address to connect to them, right? Because if we're going to have a peer-to-peer -peer connection directly between two parties, then we have to have a unique identifier for each of those parties in order to establish the connection. That's the IP address. And in the vast majority of your WebRTC calls, a stun server is going to be able to identify what is the unique IP address for that each of those individual users and use that to establish the peer-to-peer -peer connection. But sometimes the stun server can't do that. Uh, and that's where a turn server comes in. So turn is basically your backup to stun. And it's for using uh, relaying of the connection. So it's traversal using relays around the network address. So when you can't get the true IP address, the unique IP address for one of those parties, then you use a turn server to relay that information between the two parties. So let's take a quick look at how that works. So this comes into play when, um, you know, maybe typically it's because there's a firewall uh, in between the two parties. So one of the participants in the call is on a network protected by a firewall that's not allowing them to expose a direct IP address to their machine. And so what happens is we go to the stun server, we don't get an IP address that we can use for that user, and so our signaling then goes to its backup to the turn server. And the turn server is able to establish a connection between the two parties where it can exchange video traffic, but all of that video traffic, all of the content, the video, audio, and anything on the data channel is relayed through that turn server. So it becomes, uh, instead of having really a true peer-to-peer -peer direct connection between the two browsers, we're relaying that traffic between this intermediary server, the turn server. And uh, so that doesn't sound very good, right? <laughs> That's not ideal uh, in what we want in our WebRTC connection. And so is turn a bad thing? Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, it's the alternative if you, if you can't uh, get the unique IP address from the stun server, then the alternative is that you just can't connect, right? So turn is better than nothing because turn still allows us to connect that call and vast majority of the time you will be able to then connect once, uh, once you're using the turn server. But it adds cost to your infrastructure because whereas a stun server is just doing little pings and, and getting IP addresses, there's not a lot of load on a stun server. A turn server does have to relay the traffic. So there is additional load on that server. So it's going to add cost to your infrastructure because the more often you have to use the turn server and the more traffic you're sending to it, the bigger turn server or farm of servers that you need for that. It also introduces a little bit of latency to the calls. So you know, you want to have uh, use turn as little as possible. And one way around having to worry about this at all is, is if you're using one of the commercial uh, WebRTC platforms, so you're using something like a uh, Vonage or a Twilio uh, for your uh, 
WebRTC media server instead of writing all the WebRTC code yourself, then basically they're handling all of this for you. But obviously that's a commercial service, so it comes out of price. So it's, uh, you know, it's simply about a uh, trade-off between uh, cost and the peer-to-peer -peer connection, but having a turn server is better than nothing. So that's the basic role of a stun and turn server. Uh, if you want to learn more, uh, we'll put a few links below this video uh, where you can check it out. First thing you probably want to check out if you are setting up the WebRTC infrastructure yourself is uh, you will need a turn uh, server. Coturn is the most popular open source alternative, so you can get that for free and then install it on your own infrastructure to configure that. And then we've got some other links here of some other uh, great articles to check out to learn, to learn a little bit more about how STUN and TURN work. So thanks again for joining us today. If you would like to learn more about WebRTC or if you're looking for a team to help you build your custom WebRTC application, check us out at webrtc.ventures. You can also follow us on Twitter at WebRTC Ventures. We'd love to help you build your custom WebRTC application. So uh, just contact us there, and uh, we'll be posting more videos here soon about WebRTC tips around coding, architecture, and use cases. So follow us on YouTube. Thanks a lot, and let's make it live.